What you're seeing is the first optimization to a critical sorting algorithm in over a decade. This C++ code was written by the big brains over at DeepMind, but it's based on assembly code written by an artificial intelligence. No, I'm not talking about ChatGPT, I'm talking about AlphaDev. You may have missed it because a recent Nature paper by DeepMind went under the radar. Published in June of 2023, this paper details a new innovation in sorting algorithms produced by their AlphaDev coding agent. They turned writing assembly code into a single player game called Assembly Game and set their agent loose. Checking out the results, we see that AlphaDev manages to shave off several instructions from most of the sorting algorithms, as well as something called varint, which is Google's algorithm for serializing structured data for network transmission. Now latency, or how long it took the program to execute, was also improved by around 4-5% to for the variable sort algorithms, and a speedup of around 3x was achieved in the varint benchmark. I don't know the units here, but I'm guessing it's microseconds, so speed improvements are around 10 milliseconds. A 10 millisecond improvement may not seem huge, but when you consider how many times data is sorted every single day, you realize how quickly it adds up. If a computer were doing the variable sort 5 algorithm all day long, it can do an extra 16,000 sorts per day using the new improvements. So every month you can do about an extra day and a half of sorting, talking brown numbers here. That's buying an extra two weeks a year. Would you like an extra two weeks a year? I know I would. So how does all this work? Let's start by talking about the task we're trying to optimize. For our purposes, sorting large sequences of ordinal data is done by breaking it up into smaller chunks of data and sorting those. You can then merge the data to make a complete sorted array. The simplest algorithm for doing this is the merge sort, which I've crudely animated here. At the heart of this is the fixed length sort, meaning we're sorting some predetermined amount of data. But it's not the only way we might want to sort data. It's entirely possible that we want to sort a variable amount of data, as we saw in the table above, and the solutions we come up with differ in these two cases. Fixed length sorting is pretty straightforward. The code is compact and you don't have any branching. This is just a way of saying we don't have to execute different subroutines based on the number of things we're trying to sort. Since the code is so simple, code length is a useful proxy for latency. When we talk about sorting a variable list of items, things get a little more complicated. The simplest way to think about this is that you check the length of the array you're sorting and use some if-then statements to call the appropriate fixed length sorting algorithm. Since we don't end up executing all the code, we can't use code length as a proxy for latency and we have to actually measure it. These algorithms are typically written in C++. The computer then compiles the C++ code into assembly code, and the assembler converts the assembly code into machine code. AlphaDev completely skips the C++ and goes straight to writing assembly code. Now, if you're a Python programmer, assembly is going to look completely foreign, and that's because the abstractions that Python give us to make programming closer to how we think and talk are all stripped away. Assembly is just about as close to the metal as you can get. Assembly code looks like a command called an opcode followed by two parameters called operands. These opcodes are associated with everything we would want to do on a computer, like moving data from memory to the file system, interacting with your mouse, sending video to the monitor, and so on. But in general, assembly code is concerned with moving and operating on data. Where the data is stored is going to be critical to the latency of our program. The CPU has a small amount of memory called registers to store data while we operate on it. Access to this memory is very fast since it's physically located on the CPU. We also have random access memory, or RAM, which plugs into the motherboard. Access to this memory is significantly slower since we have to go across the motherboard, so we use this for storing data we need only infrequently. This means that commands to load data from memory into registers, and then from register to register, are going to play a big part in using assembly code to sort. Thankfully, AlphaDev didn't need to know the entire assembly language for modern x86 processors. Instead, they focused on a tiny subset of commands that would get the job done. As far as I can tell from the paper, they use the move, cmovex, compare, and jumpx commands. Real quick, let's take a look at what these do. Move from A to B copies the value stored in location A into location B. Now, you need to note that this operation preserves the data in the source and overwrites the data in the destination, so it's more like a copy-paste than a move, at least in my mind. Compare A to B compares the values stored in locations A and B and sets a special flag depending on the result. You can think of it kind of like taking the difference between B and A. If the result is negative, then B is larger. If it's positive, then A is larger. If it's zero, then they're equal. Jump X 
uh, with the label A is the conditional jump command, and it jumps to the label in the program designated by the letter A, depending on the result stored in the flag, which was set by the last compare command. The X here can be equals, less than, greater than, like ELG, and so on and so forth. C move X is a conditional uh, move. Move the value from A to B. If the relevant comparison flag X is set where X can be L for less than, G for greater than, and so on and so forth. Now it may seem like it's not enough, but combining these handful of commands gives AlphaDev the ability to write sorting algorithms. To see for yourself, let's check out figure one from the paper. On the left we have some C++ code that sorts a list of two elements. It takes the array length and array as input, and it's going to modify that array in place. If you're not familiar with C++, the switch statement is just like a series of if-then-else statements. So if the length is 0 or 1, there's nothing to do. We don't modify the list and we just return. If the length is 2, then we store the first element in the array in a temporary variable. Then we set the first element in the array equal to the smaller of the two elements. Then the second element gets the uh, set to the smaller of the temporary or second element in the array, array. So let's take a look at the equivalent assembly code. First we compare the value in the EDI register, which holds the length of our list, to the constant value of 2. The EDI register is filled with the 2, so if the 2 are equal, and we set our equality flag register to 1. Then we execute a jump not equal command, so if the result of the previous compare operation is that the array doesn't have exactly 2 elements, then we jump down to the dot .label, which is just a return statement. Since we are dealing with 2 elements, we execute the rest of the code. The first move statement copies a value from the memory location RSI to the EAX register. Then the next move command transfers another value from memory to the ECX register. These are the two elements of our array, so we've loaded them from RAM onto our registers. Then we compare the values on the EAX and ECX register. The equivalent of our temp variable comes next when we move the value from EAX to the EDX register. Then if our above comparison statement evaluates to less than, meaning the value at ECX is less than the value at EAX, then we move the value in ECX to EDX. Then we transfer our smallest element on the EDX register to the RSI memory location. Next we have another conditional move. If the value on the uh, ECX register was greater than the one on the EAX, then we move from ECX to EAX. It's not, so we do nothing. Finally, we move from EAX to the 4RSI memory location. Now the sequence of two elements is sorted with just a handful of commands. Okay, that was a lot to take in, but I think one uh, big takeaway is that this is a really difficult task. We have several commands and quite a few registers, so the combinations make for a huge action space. Obviously, something like DeepQ Learning isn't good enough to solve this. So what do they use? Well, AlphaDev builds on the work done by AlphaZero, which deserves its own video. The basic idea is that the agent uses a combination of Monte Carlo tree search and deep neural networks to learn the policy and value function. Monte Carlo tree search is a process where the agent constructs a tree where the nodes are states of the game world and the different branches correspond to the new state after taking an action. The agent selects a branch, plays all the way down, and then uses the rewards to update the weights of the neural network for each step of the node for each step node it traversed. Now, I know that's pretty vague, but if you want more details on how Alpha Zero and Mu Zero work, drop a comment and I'll see what I can do. One thing that is critical to all this is that the agent needs a neural network capable of representing the sorts of complex algorithms it's going to have to generate. Now, DeepMind came up with the Alpha Dev representation network, which is made of two parts. The first is a transformer network that handles encoding the assembly instructions. These instructions are represented by concatenating one hot encodings for the opcodes and the operands. These are fed into the transformer and used to generate embeddings. The second part is a CPU state encoder. This takes the current state of the memory and registers as input and outputs a separate embedding. As far as I can tell from the paper, this is a more standard deep neural network, as in a multilayer perceptron, rather than a transformer network. Since we're scoring the agent based on latency and accuracy, we need to come up with a value function for latency. Now, the value function for alpha dev uses two heads, one that predicts algorithm correctness and the other that predicts algorithm latency. The real measured latency is used as a Monte Carlo target for training the latency head of the network, and apparently this approach had better results than the single value head approach that optimizes for real latency. With all this talk of the how out of the way, let's check out some of the new algorithms. For fixed length sorting, the human benchmark is something called sorting networks. The idea here is that each horizontal wire represents the flow of data from input to output. Unsorted data comes in from the left and sorted data comes out the right. 
The vertical wires are called comparators and they perform a comparison operation between the data flowing through two wires. If the value of the top wire is smaller than the value on the bottom wire, then they swap places. The art of making these things is putting the comparators in the proper positions to generate a sorted output. If we go back to figure 3 from the paper, we can see an example of a sorting network for a sort 3 network. The circled section is where alpha dev makes its improvement. It's able to get rid of the move sp command which sets the p register to the min of a and c, and then modify the min between a, b, and c command to just the minimum between a and b. This is because the first comparator sorts wires b and c such that b is less than or equal to c. So we can just take the minimum of a and b as the first output, rather than minimum of a, b, and c. They call this operation the alpha dev swap move, and it's a really clean example of fixing up a sort operation that was thought to be completely optimized. Another example of alpha dev improving on a human sort algorithm is found in the sort 4 network, shown in figure 3D. It's from a sort 8 algorithm, so this isn't quite complete, but it's enough to get the idea. In the context of the sort 8 algorithm, there's a condition that D is greater than or equal to the minimum of A and C. And so if we look at the original and alpha dev versions of the algorithm, from comparing the red and green highlighted code, we can see that it's removed comparisons to D as well as an entire step. This is apparently what they call the alpha dev copy move. As far as innovations in variable sort, you can see an example of a variable sort 4 algorithm in figure 4 from the paper. The traditional way of sorting is pretty straightforward for a human to wrap their mind around. An array of variable length up to 4 comes in from the top and we check the length. If it's 4, 3, or 2 elements, then we call the appropriate fixed length sorting algorithm. If it's just a single element, then there's nothing to sort and we can just let it pass right on through. The alpha dev variant though seems almost alien. So if the length is less than 2, then we just return. If the length is exactly 2, we sort 2 elements in return. But if it's 3, then of course we sort 3 elements in return. The innovation is in the 4 element variable sort. If it's length 4, then we call the variable sort 3 on the first 3 elements, and then call a simplified sort 4 to sort the last unsorted element. It's this last step that saves time since putting that one unordered element into an ordered list of 3 elements is faster than sorting an unordered list of 4 elements. So this was a bit of exposition on this recent paper, and we've only scratched the surface. The authors included a bunch of information about comparison to other techniques as well as generalization to other domains. The supplementary information contains details about their architecture and all the usual stuff. If you're interested in going to the weeds, I recommend checking out the paper. And I'd be remiss if I didn't make a shameless plug. If you made it this far and want the shortest path from where you are to being a master of AI, then please consider my courses. I take a totally different approach where I show you how to analyze and implement these papers as quickly as possible. This really is the fastest way to learn as you're able to go straight to the source of progress in the field of AI rather than waiting on me or others to make digestible tutorials. For just 25 bucks a month, you can save dozens and dozens of hours in your learning, which even if you value your time at minimum wage is a huge return on your investment. I offer a 7-day free trial, so if you don't like it, you're not charged anything. If you made it this far, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.